This channel is not intended for children. Please kickstart responsibly. Hey everybody, it's the weekend and I'm back. And this time we are doing another board game, card game, skirmish, and war game only episode. And you can catch all the 3D printing stuff with the RPG stuff on the next episode, which will also be arriving sometime this weekend. I don't know if I can do them both in one day. We'll see. There's a lot going on this time. And just don't expect everything to always be split up like this. Sometimes they're going to be combined because we got through so many June campaigns. I am way ahead of the game, which feels awesome. But there's also a whole lot coming out all of a sudden for the summer. And uh, maybe we'll split things. Maybe we won't. Just subscribe. Keep track. I got all the nerd stuff that you could want already in every episode. And uh, if you, as always, want to go and skip ahead feel free to do that click in the description and you'll see the time indices and uh then you won't have to hear me babble so there's that let's keep going through june and we have cool mini or not right up front and they are doing a comic book it's a hardcover comic book so it's more of a graphic novel for each of their three latest games, Cthulhu Death May Die, Zombicide Invader, and Zombicide Second Edition. And one of the cool things, not only do you get the 130 page plus uh, graphic novels, you get the uh, people that are in the comic books as part of your game if you want them to be. And that gives them survivor cards, you get the minis, you get all kinds of cool stuff. One thing that they're going to be doing different, which seems to be a trend for the new bigger companies, is daily unlocks instead of money-based unlocks. And this is interesting in the sense that if you, you buy a lot of Kickstarters, and the reason why I say Kickstarter responsibly at the beginning, you can get juiced. You can get an almost addictive rush from all the stretch goals and everything going on and big campaigns and craziness, and then you just kind of feel let down. Especially in the middle of a campaign, you're just kind of like, oh, there's no stretch goals. Am I going to get a stretch goal again? I don't know. And the campaigns, they can kind of figure out all the cool stuff that they're going to make and what they can afford to do really easy if they know about how many minis they're going to make. It kind of makes sense. It's a little different tactic. And this is a test case for Simon. We'll see how it goes. But for someone like me that did back all three of these campaigns, it is great to be able to extend them out and be able to play them more. Zombicide 2nd Edition actually has an RPG that goes along with it, so not only will I be able to extend my use of Zombicide, I'll actually be able to extend the use of the RPG if I so chose. Cost-wise, you pay about 20 bucks for a graphic novel-ish, and it wouldn't come with all of the figures that are going to come with it. I think in total it's about 21 different figures, and then you get some other cards and different things. Right now it's all blocked out, but during this short campaign, there will be no lull, there will be no downtime, and everyone will just constantly feel juiced by it. And uh, that part is nice. It's not going to work for every campaign. It's probably only going to work for these really big ones where they have an idea, like I said, of how many units they're going to sell or what they need to know right away what's going to fit in the box so they can change things up. But that's not the only tactic uh, they can take with this new configuration of stretch goals. Awaken Realms is going to do something a little extra special later in the episode. Then we have a kind of crazy war game. This is Dawn of Battle. And it is supposed to span 3,000 years of technological development and warfare. You play on a regular hex grid and it's supposed to be expandable where you can play two boards at once if you want even bigger armies to go against each other. But right now it's a two player game and you have cards instead of dice. So if you've been looking for a game that has no dice, here you go, this is an option. Um, and you have all these different conditions, it's all the same stuff that you would normally choose in a, or have in a war game. You have uh, units getting scared off, you have different types of tactics you can put out, but it's all on the cards. And uh, you know, some people like that, some people don't. Um, like Gloomhaven's not a big dice heavy game, it's more cards based. Maybe this would be like the Gloomhaven of war games for you. It obviously is going to be spanning almost as epic a, uh, an experience, but they say they can do it in under two hours, and we know Gloomhaven is definitely not a two hour situation. Uh, art looks pretty cool, and uh, it covers lots of different uh, characters and different uh, time periods. You got Greece, you got Rome, you got Vikings, you got Japanese, Egyptian, you have Templars, you've got it all, if that's what you're looking for. 
Then we have a new solitaire game called Food Chain Island. I'm not really sure how it's supposed to work, but you're supposed to whittle down the animals until you only have one left. And as you can see, sometimes there's sharks and whales, and other times there's little land critters in a very cutesy style. I don't know if uh, it's going to work for your child, if you have one, the understanding that, yes, animals are terrible to each other, and they eat each other. Um, but maybe you set a target and then it's like, oh, make it so that this one lives or you get to the end. Depending on how you lay out the cards, uh, it's going to be based on movement of uh, the other cards in the area. You're going to pull one off at a time. And as you move through it, you're going to be presented with uh, choices and you have to figure out which one's going to be the right one to puzzle your way down to a single card. That's not the end of the world. It's kind of neat. It is a... Um, you know, nature is a cool way to uh, represent the different game mechanics, and it seems to be fitting for this one in the sense that you're whittling it down to one. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what we're doing now, right? We have these huge agricultural monocultures. Then from Midland Miniatures, which, if I'm correct, they normally just have uh, metal miniatures that they come out with all the time. They have a new game, it's called Book of the Dead. It is Lovecraft based in the sense that the cultists have taken the Necronomicon and the pages have flown out all of their own accord. You have to organize them up and uh, to do that you're going to use these dice. I think these dice look really cool. If nothing else to pick this up, I think that the theme of the different dice is kind of nice to have around. As you got the little psycho thing, you got lore, you've got the skulls. These are very well themed and would fit in if you were going to be playing, um, what you might call it, Arkham Horror, Eldritch Horror, any of those kinds of things from Fantasy Flight as well, um, or you just like uh, like myself, I uh, I use a plastic skull and little uh, 1920s prescription bottles as uh, my uh, resource and uh, you know, like sanity and help and all that. That's what I keep my stuff in. If you check out my uh, Instagram, it's on there. You can. Look at all my stuff I built. But anyway, it would fit really well into that kind of theme. Uh, so if you're a big Lovecraft fan, this might be just a neat little uh, card and dice game to uh, pass the time with. Uh, but still keep uh, the theme with all your other cool stuff. Then if horror is your theme and you want something a little more modern, Survive a Nightmare is an incredibly cheap way to do that. It costs about a euro. Um, and uh, it's in Mexican pesos, so... I would say double check any of the currencies because you might look at it and be like, well, that's too expensive. No, it's in Mexican pesos. Um, it's a regular survival horror game. It just takes a few pieces of paper, you print it out yourself, and you can jump in and, and do whatever you want. If you've got minis from another game, you got cubes or something from another game, feel free to use all that stuff. Otherwise, it is a basic survival horror movie. You're just running around, running away from the monster, whatever it is. You got a couple different maps, and uh, you know basics of figuring it out. It is one of those things where if you're just looking to pass the time, a lot of places have opened back up, but a lot of ones haven't. And uh, if that's the case in your area, and you're just looking for a way to to kill some more extra time, or maybe you found an extra love for the board game world, here's a way to to fill those shelves up for one euro. Speaking of low cost, that's what we have here in Inca Empire, the card game. This is a lower cost, card-based version of a different board game that, as would be the opposite, a little more expensive. If you are a fan of uh, South America and its history, and you want to take a look at the Inca Empire and build yourself a different type of uh, worker placement or an empire control game, then this may be a cool option for you. Art looks pretty neat, um, but it, it basically is just one of those, uh, uh, how do I want to put it? Uh, I'm trying to think of a game that's, that's comparable to it. And all I can think of is like the, the 4X Explore games, um, but in the, in the building side of it, not necessarily like the tech trees and all that other kind of cool stuff that you'd find in like uh, Rise of Empires or whatever. But, um, you know, it's, it's the part where you're uh, building up the currencies and setting up trade agreements with other people. And uh, there is a little bit of semi-cooperativeness to it in the sense that you can have secret goals that you're trying to reach that the other players may not be. So that's always a fun way to, uh, to add a little bit of variety because you never know what 
uh, combination of uh, secret goals that player is going to pick and uh, gives it replayability. So that part's a good idea. Then we have Puppy Care, which is like running a vet hospital for animals. It's two to four players, and you're running around trying to save some corgis. They've, uh, or whatever type of dog this is, maybe I'm off. They look like corgis to me because they're little tiny dogs. Um, I don't know if you could hear, there's obviously some street racing going on late at night as I record this. But anyway, back to the dogs. They look like Doge coins. I don't know if you do that, they were like a Bitcoin competitor, but they had a little dog in them. And uh, maybe that would be a fun way to, uh, to make that currency useful if you introduce that into the game. Um, as you can see, there are a lot of different options, different cards. You uh, have all of the different types of ailments available you would see in a vet's office. They poop, they get shots, they put on a cone of shame. It's all happening. It's supposed to be super fast paced and they say it is for the whole family. But if you have to put a dog down in this game, it is not for the little tiny kids. Then we have something I can't wrap my head around, which is whatever this game is about. It is an anime style game. I have no idea what that is supposed to be. They're idols. I think of idol. It's either a singer on television or that thing that Indiana Jones is trying to pick up at the beginning of Raiders of the Lost Ark. I don't understand conceptually what idols are in Japan. If this is for you, uh, there's some type of resource management that goes on. Uh, they can be sabotaged. So maybe that's how it works back and forth. Uh, when I was living in Asia, I, there was things like this on television, but I didn't quite get that. The only time I watched television was uh, the Olympics or uh, when I was eating at the Chinese food place. So stuff like this might have been on. It could have been a K-drama. I don't know. Uh, I never got that far along. But uh, maybe somebody else could explain in the comments exactly what this is about culturally. And uh, that can help somebody help find out if this is for them. I'm assuming it's for girls, but to make that assumption these days is impossible to be correct all the time. So if you're a dude into this, maybe it's for you. A little bit easier to understand is World War I in the air. These are biplanes. This is, I think, what, 13 years after the Wright Brothers uh, flight is when World War I takes place. Uh, dog fights, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, it's a simple uh, setup, uh, just the things they, they sit up on uh, little sliders like standees and uh, there's not a lot of 3D in uh, as far as it goes, but they didn't really fly all that, that high anyway, so you just kind of like wah, 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 whatever you got to do to <laughs> figure that part out. Um, World War I isn't always represented uh, in the war game space as well as the World War II stuff just because there was more of it in World War II and uh, it was you know more sophisticated a lot of different options and I think it lasted longer um, early technology early tanks early planes all that kind of thing does not make it any less fascinating and uh, maybe it's fascinating to you so if you want to jump in and uh, do some dog fighting or bring Snoopy out whatever the case Age of Dog Fights World War One and if that's not old enough for you Eschaton Empire Conquest of Jerusalem is about the First Crusade so really ancient um, art is pretty neat little figurines are pretty neat these guys are having a real real hard time getting funded so you may want to just take a look and see if it's uh, something that fits within your time frame I'm just not sure if the uh, the area um, uh, or the era of, of the time is uh, something people aren't interested in maybe it's just controversial um, maybe they don't like the art a lot of it is photographs and different things so um, maybe they want something a little more fantasy style with the paintbrush created could not tell you but that doesn't make it any less interesting of a area it doesn't make it any less interesting of, uh, of a time period to play uh, as you can see the everything's not to scale but it still could be pretty fun uh, lots of different uh, options are available in the game, so it's not just a single map, it's not just a single anything, but you can check it out yourself if you're interested in this kind of wargaming. And those two were about war, and what's war got in common with each other? Death. This is I Am Death now, and it is supposed to be for the family, 
it's a murder simulator, a torture simulator, and it's done in a cutesy art style that maybe makes that acceptable. You're supposed to be a death, uh, grim reaper, perhaps, not necessarily in, uh, like a grim fandango style, but I think more like a dead like me style. And you're being trained on how to call the, the living and, uh, you know, kill them. So much like portal, you have scientific testing set up, you have puns, which are on these different cards, which are painful to hear, and those are the pains that are put upon your victims. Pretty well thought out. It's uh, it's a neat little thing. I wouldn't mind playing it myself if I had the opportunity. Not bad, Mobile, Alabama. Looks like you got a nice little winner. The Intantrum House is looking for your help, and one of the cool things that they have are a bunch of different uh, game packages that were donated to them by various distributors or publishers and they're also giving away or not necessarily giving away but they're selling to you these packages of ways to expand your other games with their characters so like you could get the tantrum house chronicles of crime uh, cards and then you can use those in the game most of the time it is just the faces of the different people that you see on their channel but uh, sometimes they have some actual uh, use to it for uh, extra gameplay. You have to go through, there's a, dozens of these different games, as you can see there on the left, and a bunch of different packages. The packages are running out quickly. A lot of them are already sold out, like right away. But uh, that doesn't mean they don't have more. And they have other clothing and bags and other cool stuff, that if you're interested in that, that you can pick up. I'm sure if you watch their channel that they've already uh, told you about it, but if you haven't had a chance, they also do upcoming board games, like they go through the Kickstarter upcoming list, and uh, that's why my channel's a little bit different, uh, because I don't know if, what those actual timings of things when they're coming out, so I'll tell you when it's actually available and you can jump on it, and uh, give you links to, the, uh, to the, the campaigns, which a lot of places don't do. Then we have Bloodfields, this was on the uh, last RPG episode, and I just wanted to make sure you guys didn't miss out on it, because it is 3D printable, uh, that's why I put it on the 3D printable channel for people to use in their uh, various war games and whatnot. But it is supposed to be a war game, it's not just supposed to be for used for uh, RPGs, they do offer lots of different terrain. Titan Forge, they've got uh, Talented Sculptors, uh, Dragon Empire, and a bunch of the other games that they've come out with in the past. Um, have been popular, so if you were looking for those type of minis and you wanted to be able to print it out yourself, here's an opportunity to do that for fairly low price. And, uh, you know, they're going to ship it right away. I'm not sure support-wise what uh, they're going to need um, or what type of suggested materials are out there, but if you have one of the mini resin printers, I'm sure you'll be more than set up to be able to get into this level of detail, uh, and they are pretty well detailed. And there are a lot of playing cards that come out on Kickstarter all the time, and I don't always put them on this channel, except if I think that there's something really cool about them. I think the boxes look really good. I like the uh, pictures uh, that are in the center of the frame there, as you can see. And uh, the little antiquing style, it's more like a filigree, but you know, depending on how close you can see it, it might just look like old-timey wear. Uh, the backs of the cards look great. I mean... Vengeance of Witches, and if you know the history of the uh, playing card and the playing card deck, it uh, could have been early divination use. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was banned at a certain point for different types of divination and then had to become a, a game. Um, the spade, I think, used to be swords. There's all kinds of different things that were, were introduced uh, as far as the different sets. And, uh, you know, why not uh, bring some of that history in with you? Uh, they do sit one way, so it's not like a traditional uh, playing card you get from Bicycle or whatever, where you can uh, play it in any orientation. But uh, they've got all kinds of cool, like Witch Hunters and other crazy business in there, and uh, two different boxes. It looks cool. That's why, I, you know, why not? Why not throw that in there? And then we have Don Shade, The Watcher's Prophecy, which is supposed to be like a JRPG. They say it's a JRPG adventure in a box. I don't think that it looks all that anime to me. Maybe it's the story style. I don't really do much in the JRPG stuff. I don't play a lot of consoles either. Um, 
but it does have a big old book that brings you through the narrative and you walk along the road and uh, the road continues to change so this is theoretically supposed to make it so you can use uh, all of the possible permutations and combinations so you won't run out of um, anything to do so that part is nice and the narrative hundreds of pages long is uh, going to guide you through much in the way that the book does for um, Gloomhaven as I brought up earlier or uh, the one from Awaken Realms which uh, I have in the other room and I was playing the other day and I can't remember what Tainted Grail great game can't remember the name sometimes but a great game so uh, yeah it's just if you're looking for a new adventure and you want something they look like tieflings to me um, or maybe tabaxi uh, you know big eared big eyed cat looking thing style uh, of a game then uh, maybe this is what you're waiting for, especially if you're a big JRPG fan. And we've had some ancient Egypt themed games that were pretty popular earlier in the year that popped up on Kickstarter, but this time is an older game that is getting a revamp. This is Kemet Blood and Sand. So by the original publishers, once again, by Madagot in France. And uh, you get all the new cool stuff. You get to play the game once again. This is going to be a two to five player game, and it will basically be the gods versus the other gods so if you wanted it basically an egyptian version of uh attack of or clash of the titans here you go it's uh it's got all that cool business in there especially if you missed out on the cool mini or not stuff or you just weren't interested in that and you wanted to change it up to a different type of style or uh, you wanted to just play a game that was tested in a different way that part is up to you uh, I don't have nothing against Eric Lang, and I don't have anything against these folks at Madagot either. Uh, it's just a matter of your style and what you choose uh, to have on your table. I think it's kind of neat. I like the layouts of the different towns. I've been playing Assassin's Creed Origins, so it's kind of neat when I see the layouts and different things. Um, if you want to, you can get the Discover. Uh, I don't know if it was if it's still free, but you can play uh, Assassin's Creed: The Discovery Tour and uh, see all the cool stuff yourself, and maybe that'll get you in the mood for this type of game when it eventually arrives. Then we have another anime-themed game called Bullet. I don't know if the heart is pronounced or not, but it's by the folks that make Battlegone and much other anime-themed games. So they've definitely got a history going on with that, and uh, this is a shoot 'em up. It's in the style of older arcade games. There's one in particular that uh, I can't pronounce. That if you watch the video, you can check out the idea of having a full screen full of stuff flying at you and uh, making adjustments from there. To me, it looks a little bit like a puzzle game, like uh, Bejeweled is a puzzle game. And uh, you're looking for different orientations and patterns. And as that ha happens, the bullets fly back and forth between different players um, which is an interesting mechanic and uh, you know if that's what you're into these folks at level 99 have uh, lots of other games to play along as well then we have a puzzle box this is an escape room basically in a box this is Enigma box volume one they call it Arcanum and uh, the idea of the episode as it were is you're trying to figure out the secret of secrets. You've got your puzzle wheels, you've got your uh, different puzzles, you've got your um, goggles and other cool stuff that you're going to need. Everything's out in that box. Uh, I'm not really sure why this type of thing is on Kickstarter because there's a lot of different options available that you find in regular local game stores. And it may just be because of the types of components uh, would otherwise be prohibitive or hard to, uh, to market. And uh, that's not a problem. You should take a look and see what type of stuff they've done. They've got a couple of things they created, but it is uh, mainly like VR, AR, drones, and all that kind of stuff that uh, these folks were involved with. So I would have a high expectation of technology being utilized as part of uh, this, uh, this game. If you're into it, jump on. If you're not into it, well... Maybe just follow them along and uh, and see if they come out with other boxes and make this available a little bit later. Because uh, that does happen quite a bit. Then we had a bunch of golf games in the past. And finally we have one that is of the only type of golf that matters. That's mini golf. This is mini golf designer. You get to make your own little obstacles and, and games and play through it. Um, I think this would be a really fun... I don't know if you remember the Tycoon games. If they still make those. 
um, you know, those design your own theme park, that kind of thing, uh, for a video game. I'm not really sure how well it's going to work. I don't see a lot of math mechanics being used in this, uh, this setup, so it seems to be fairly simplified. Might be fun with kids, uh, and then, you know, take them out and go to do a little putt-putt. Then we have a huge campaign, probably the hugest of the month. This is Nemesis Lockdown. This is a standalone expansion to Nemesis. But you could go pick up Nemesis if you mixed and missed it because uh, they're reprinting it for you. Uh, they're reprinting it to the extent where they actually went and retweaked some models. And uh, if you want some of the new models, they're going to make it uh, fairly inexpensive in the Pledge Manager to pick that up. Uh, that would be for the Nemesis regular core game, not for Nemesis Lockdown. Nemesis Lockdown's all new. It has different mechanics, like there's computer terminals, there's elevators, uh, power is a resource that you have to utilize, and instead of being in a single ship, you have multiple levels of, I think, a station or a building that you're uh, running through, and uh, or a laboratory. So, unfortunately, named Lockdown now. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't think that anyone's going to hold any stigmas when this finally comes out. They'll be far too excited to jump on it. This is another one of those that is only using the daily goals. Not really so much stretching of a stretch goal, but they're still calling it that. But uh, they're doing something a little different in that every single time they're, that they're about to release one, they're going to go to the community and see what the community wants. So they're really famous for doing a lot of community engagement. And uh, that's why they uh, are not the ones called the Evil Empire because uh, Waken Realms is awesome. Then a much smaller game that we haven't seen the theme of this round is Pirates. Sea of Nadia is a little bit different because it is supposed to utilize a augmented reality app along with it. Um, so you're running around and you're doing your basic things and then you'll hit some type of QR code or whatever and uh, pick up your phone and you'll be able to see more of the game play out. I don't see it doing huge numbers because all, augmented reality is still kind of a new thing and people don't necessarily always want to use their phones uh, when playing their board games. It's kind of an escape from the phone uh, to a degree. But uh, if you have a phone-obsessed child, then this is a great way to run down their battery. Then we have a new social deduction game that comes with a train track. That's kind of neat, throwing that all together. And uh, you have to find everyone's roles. You need at least four people to play. But it does say it plays pretty quick. And uh, you've got to stop the train to Paris before it crashes. So uh, lots of cool things are going on there. Uh, social deduction is not my favorite style. But uh, I do like train games. So if anything was going to entice me to come back in, it might be this one. Then this is a game that uh, we've had on the channel before. This is Storm Dragons and they're trying to get a six player expansion to come out uh we talked about before that the art was pretty cool and people like dragons this is uh, a different type of combat game i think one of the things they could do differently this time around they've already funded but if they wanted to fund a little bit better is uh, a better explanation of the rules and how the game works, especially on the introduction video um they just kind of show people moving cards around without context it doesn't mean anything so uh, I think that in the future would make it work uh, because otherwise the art looks great for it I give the same criticism here for a tactica this comes with a nice wooden uh, game board and uh, I don't know if it's handmade or not but it looks uh, definitely uh, like it could be the components, therefore, are uh, fairly solid. It's just hard to see them because of the way that they've uh, decided to introduce everything. Um, in their video, they don't really show the game. They just show all these little CG pirate pieces. Not sure why they decided to do that, but uh, kind of missed out on the opportunity to show that they have this nice, uh, you know, wooden board. It's almost like a game of uh, Battleship. Um, but you're going to throw some dice back and forth and play different things and blow each other up with your various armadas. So if you're looking for something uh, more nautical themed, then this is a nice little pocket game that you could take with you that does have neat little components that, uh, you know, will impress the folks that you take the game to go play with. Then we've got wizards going to war and they're taking with them gnomes, elves, and trolls because 
they want to uh, make the best potions possible and you're all competing for those same resources you can get a print and play version or uh, you can you know get the box version the little Christmas troll or Christmas gnome looking guy uh, is pretty neat um, the meeples though are in my opinion a little too generic and they can use some paint on them but maybe that parts up to you the uh, troll doesn't look as uh, angry and uh, you know, menacing as he could be it looks pretty happy like yay I'm at a game you know what I mean so maybe that's just me but uh, other than that uh, you know solidly put together in the sense that uh, it's it's at least you understand what they're going for and uh, you know not gonna scare away the kids then we have practical man magic inner witch oracle deck I'll be honest the only reason I include this one is to uh, try to figure out if it had anything to do with that movie with Nicole Kidman and uh, Sandra Bullock in it called Practical Magic and uh, maybe you guys can tell me if that's what this is because otherwise eh, you know it's another deck maybe it's tarot um, I really can't figure out what it's about but uh, I'm sure there's a Stevie Nicks fan out there that uh, is willing to tell us. And there's a cool thing in this game. It's called Reforge Worlds. This is a game where you forge your sword a little bit like uh, Bears vs. Babies where you build your bear. You build your sword as you go along. You have uh, guards, they've got blades, they've got handles, they've got all kinds of different things. And uh, at the same time, you're supposed to adventure to find those different things you can stick on there. I think it's neat. Uh, it's a different type of mechanic. Uh, I mean, you know, it's domino style in the sense that you're building it out. You might need a significant amount of table space is the only thing I can think against it. It comes with a magnetic box and uh, that keeps everything together. I do not think the box fits sleeved cards, which I think is unfortunate because I like having all my stuff nice and fresh and easy and sleeved and it's easy to shuffle and all that kind of stuff too. But maybe this game doesn't need that. And then there's something that I don't drink, but you might. Chai High Tea. It is a game about having a tea party. And this probably has more uh, to do with Asian themes than uh, other cultures. And they might make more sense out of it or need to explain it to folks as I might need it explained to me. But uh, I think I've had the coconut chai the herbal stuff the only type of chai tea I've had um, but uh, if this is your thing and you want something without the violence and uh, maybe you could play it on Mother's Day chai hi tea and we have a relaunch of another game that uh, we've covered before so I don't think I need to go too much depth into this this is upkeep and it is about raking leaves and uh, when I think about that, I got Beavis and Butthead going, Raking the lawn, raking the lawn, dun dun, raking the lawn, raking the lawn, dun dun. Yeah, so uh, I don't think that has anything to do with this game whatsoever, other than the theme being you got to keep the lawn clean while uh, the fall trees are coming down. There's a solo mode, like I said before on the previous campaign, non violent, and uh, could be perfect if that's what you're looking for. Then we have. Ur Gen C. Now this is a game that was discovered. The rules were figured out by the man, the myth, the legend, the curator of Asian antiquities, Irving Finkel of the British Museum, who kicks butt in this game and talks trash left and right. I have left a link in the description so you can follow that as well. I like the British Museum's uh, Curator Quarter channel. That's where I found out about Irving Finkel and he is the man and uh, nobody knew what the rules were for this ancient game of Ur that people in Babylonia would have bet on and uh, you can see why because it's basically a racing game and uh, there's a lot of drama that goes on with it. It is, uh, it is tense and uh, definitely something you can gamble on. A game of skill, uh, a slight game of chance. It has a different kind of die than uh, you would normally see. It doesn't at all use the type of dice that we would use in our regular polyhedral sets. Um, and you run around this board and it's got these varying different types of rules. And, uh, you know, it's just neat. I think you should watch him. Uh, play it for about 20 minutes and you'll uh, you'll see the joy that could be involved in this type of game 
And we have Dice Miner. This is an interesting concept, and you're supposed to roll in what is a tray that looks like a mountain, and somehow that gives you different combos and different abilities. Uh, Atlas Games has a few out. Uh, before, I'm not sure how this one necessarily functions, because I haven't played a whole lot of dice collection games. Um, and I can just see this thing spilling everywhere <laughs> if you're not careful. So uh, how you pour the dice out might be as uh, important as what you pour the dice into, which is that mountain. It's just neat. If you're a big fan of dice and, you know, the way they look, then uh, this might be a no-brainer. I'm not sure if the orientations matter at all or just the values, and uh, that gives you the thing that you're looking for for your strategy. Then we have Gangs of Dark City, and before you get your hopes up, it is not about the Dark City movie which I think does a disservice to this game. Art looks pretty cool. It's got all this uh, nearly photorealistic uh, painting that's been done to create all these various characters. I'm going to bet that they're probably like 3D models, maybe, that are put together and then done. Otherwise, it's just a phenomenal painter that's uh, done a lot of that work. Um, anyway... There's Yakuza, there's regular Mafia, it looks like there's urban Mafia in the sense of gangstas and bikers that uh, have a Harley Quinn vibe going on. But there was this movie, and it's called Dark City, and uh, I think that most of the time people are going to think this is a Dark City movie game, and they're going to be disappointed, or it is too generic of a term, like why they would call it Dark City, and they don't utilize the dark itself. It's supposed to mean what, necessarily? So I think that uh, the gameplay and all the other elements might be a harder sell when you just see the name first. But otherwise, like I said, art looks neat, and maybe the gameplay looks pretty neat, uh, seemed balanced. So this is a game out of Denmark that apparently is the most popular game in Denmark and has been for a very long time. And some guy named Hunter Gorski, who is apparently an American soccer player, uh, he's the one that found it overseas and decided to bring it to America. Um, again, with the marketing, I think the reason why they're not doing better is because they spend the whole time talking about, oh, my Dutch teammates in soccer and this, that, and the other thing. And trying to push the celebrity angle when all anyone really wants to know is how do you play the game and why am I going to be interested in it? And that's not explained well enough to me to be able to explain it to you. I need to find somebody from Denmark to be able to explain to me what this number one game is. It looks a little bit like a Trivial Pursuit board, but everybody's running around and they got the different colors. And uh, I know there's some point where you're trying to use the cards in your hand to help not just yourself, but your partner, and sabotage other teams. So obviously this is not going to be a solo game. You're going to need at least four people to have two teams and a partner in each one of them. So if you need something new, you want to try something, uh, a different type of Euro game, then uh, maybe this is, uh, this is right up your alley. Everyone on the video seems to enjoy it. Then we have something that's a little easier to explain, Salt and Bones. You are using these cards to duel on a crumbling ship. So your theme is piracy in the middle of combat where you have extra combat when you had all those cool sword fights like uh, Errol Flynn and uh, other folks uh, with Mutiny on the Bounty. If you watch Goonies, that's you know what, the, what they're watching. Um, that kind of thing that Sloth would have wanted to be as the pirate. That's what you're doing. You're doing the fight, you're doing the uh, the, the back and the forth, and uh, whatever you can to uh, manage your fancy footwork along with your fancy blade work. Salt and Bones, different than Rum and Bones, which is a Simon property, also about piracy, but a lot more granular on just the person-to-person uh, -person combat, which is a nice surprise. Another nice surprise is this book, which happens to be what holds your game, which is really cool. Uh, this is Bristol 1350. It is about the Black Death, out or the plague, however you want to describe it. And you are having a cart, you know, those bring out your dead uh, types of carts. 
and you're racing to get out of town before you get infected. Uh, that is awesome. There's a little bit of uh, semi-co-op, like I said, in the sense that uh, you're trying to get away from the players that are infected, and they're trying to get hold of you. And uh, that just brings out a lot of interesting uh, ways to play. Um, it's got the, the little miniatures for the carts, which is a nice touch. Uh, neat little uh, uh, unique dice to play with. And uh, it's a tarot style on the character cards, which is, you know, very much within theme. So uh, it's neat, and it's playing a, a, a concept that is very different than anything else I've ever seen. I haven't seen anyone doing competitive uh, grave carding on anything before. Kudos to these guys. So another interesting thing is the confabulation. This is a word search. You have cards and you're supposed to find words based on a theme, but they're just kind of randomly distributed and, uh, you know, you can pull out whatever it is that you want. So, um, you don't have to go straight across, you don't go down, you just have to select it and then keep moving around and, uh, don't get stuck. And, uh, you know, like there's mint right there, but maybe mint is not what, uh, you're uh, supposed to be looking for. Um, as you can see, there's like uh, five different choices. Everybody's doing everything they can to keep trying to spell the stuff out. It gives an advantage to people that are good at spelling and that are uh, highly literate, which I always enjoy um, anytime there's a mental challenge. Um, and so, you know, you're doing everything you can to beat them and uh, write things down faster. And if you're a fan of, what is it, 8 out of 10 cats do countdown? Uh, I've been watching on YouTube. Uh, this would be a great one for the uh, conundrums and uh, what you call it, the uh, you know spelling challenges. Then we have another puzzle game. This is the Emerald Flame narrative puzzle adventure, and uh, this is very similar to the Escape Room, but I would guess also similar to something crazy like the Voynich manuscript. Which, if uh, you don't know what it is, neither does anyone else because they can't decipher it. Um, all kinds of neat. Uh, these, these stained glass things, the, the puzzles done in an entirely different way on the puzzle wheel from the previous entry and things that you find. It's, uh, it's just all kinds of neat. Um, I don't know if the challenge is going to be up there the same way. I don't know if all the puzzles are going to make coherent sense, which is the problem I always have on uh, any of these uh, box puzzle systems is you don't have direct feedback uh, with them and you can't tell them like hey man this puzzle doesn't make any sense because a lot of times it doesn't um, but uh, you know if you can get over that kind of uncertainty uh, and uh, pick it up yourself uh, you might be pleasantly surprised because at the very least it looks like they put a lot of thought into the design here then we have the promoted example for, or sorry, promoted expansion for good cop, bad cop. This is a weird kind of game in that uh, there's a little bit of investigation from these uh, face down cards, and then you have to point your gun at them, and it depends on like how you flick things. And it's a weird kind of setup. It's neat though, thematic wise. You can book them down or however you want to uh, to say it uh, when you get your your thief. Personally, cop theme games, I've got Brook City that I don't get a chance to play as often as I'd like to. Uh, so for me, it's uh, it's not going to happen. But uh, I think this could be really fun at uh, like one of those, um, I don't want to say church, because I don't know if other places do it. The, the Atheist Church down there in Long Beach uh, has uh, these round tables, and they'll have board game nights. I think it would be fun for something like that. Or, uh, you know, just static invention or something. I think it would be uh, a little bit of fun. Then we have a game that would probably be fun for teenagers, not so much for preteens, but uh, name that review where you pretend to be a various persona and you're reviewing a product and the buyer has to guess what the product is based on your review. You're going to do a one star or a five star and uh, lots of wackiness can happen. This is a great way to work on your salesmanship. This is a great way to work on uh, your imagination. I mean, I think it's awesome. I think it's a great idea. And uh, maybe people will 
give a little more of a grain of salt when they look at things on places like Yelp, which I think is terrible, because who's voting on Yelp? A bunch of people that don't know what they're talking about, right? So why are you going to trust more people that don't know what you're talking about? You know what the average, you know what the IQ of uh, a billion people with a hundred IQ points is? It's still a hundred. It's not a hundred billion. <laughs> you know what I mean? In aggregate, they're not smarter. Great to be able to have the literacy to be able to uh, to tell the difference when people know what they're talking about or don't, and make fun of them because uh, humor makes the learning a lot better, right? Name that review. Why not? Have a game show in your home. All right, that's the end of it for me. I'm exhausted. I still got one more episode to do, so the RPG stuff will be out later in the uh, weekend. Uh, maybe it'll be out later today, maybe not. Uh, I've got a, a busy bit going on trying to get my car fixed, so we'll see how that part all goes together. And, uh, you know, cross your fingers. Hopefully I'll get it out of limp home mode, and uh, I'll be back on the road. That'll be fun. Let me know uh, what you guys got going on, if there's anything that you like, didn't like, that kind of business. Uh, if you can uh, also like the video with a thumbs up, hit a subscribe if you want to help me out, then uh, that would be uh, awesome too. Got a lot of new people that uh, jumped on from the last two videos, so uh, welcome on in and uh, keep on coming back over the weekend and I'll keep uh, scouring all the sites to let you know what's coming out. You guys have a good one.